You know when you go to a website and you see a little pop-up window that shows up with a discount, you put in your name and it sends you an email? You can actually do that really easily using Elementor's pop-up feature. Let me show you how I got it done. We've all seen this kind of pop-up whenever you go to an e-commerce site. It's essentially a little pop-up that shows up that gives you a discount if you put in your email address. So let's recreate that using Elementor. You don't need something like Optin Monster or anything like that in order to create something from scratch within Elementor's pop-up builder. So first let's go to uh, our dashboard and we're going to select templates, pop-ups. Then we're going to create a new pop-up. And then we're going to call this a discount pop-up. We're gonna hit create template. And then we're gonna close out the pop-ups that show up here. I mean, you can use one of these to start off, but I think, you know, for our purposes, I just wanna create something from scratch to kind of show you. All right, so as I usually do, I like to make this pop-up a little bit larger so we have a little bit more room to work with. Because this pop-up is gonna show up in the center, we're gonna keep it centered. We do want an overlay, we want a close button, we want to make sure everything looks good in the general settings, and we're gonna hit publish here. And I think it looks good. Next, we're going to go to the style section and we're gonna change the background. I am going to choose a green background now for this particular purpose. And I do want a border on this particular um, pop-up as well. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a 10 pixel border and we're going to make a color the secondary so it stands out and I like that and we're going to give it a border radius of 20. Now the close button looks a little bit dark so we're going to make that yellow and again uh, as I always like to say I don't want to spend too much time with design because you just want to get to figuring out how to do it right. So we're gonna make this pop up with an X a little bit big, make sure people are able to close it. I think this is looking already really good. Um, I don't really need to change the position of the X button. I think I'm good, happy with that. Uh, let's see if you have a different overlay. Let's see if we choose that yellow. I know it's a little intense. I don't think it's gonna look good, but no, that doesn't look too bad actually. We'll see, we might go back and change it, but for now I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think that looks good. We want to disable scrolling because we don't want this action going on as somebody's looking at the coupon. We want their full attention to the, to the coupon code. We want to avoid multiple pop-ups. And I think that's it. For the purposes of right now, before we go into design, we're going to choose on display conditions. Actually, we're going to update. And then on the display conditions, we're going to choose our entire site just so we can easily preview our template. Um, but like I always say, you know, you can always set up a test page and then make sure that that's what shows up where this um, pop-up shows up all right so for now let's just click entire site and we want this to load every time somebody goes to the website for now and then no more advanced rule conditions and we're going to hit save and close all right so we have our basic settings of our pop-up ready to go all right let's wait for that to save perfect and then let's get started so we're going to choose a heading we're going to drop that in there and then we're gonna make the heading white so we can actually see it. Well, this, you know what, that's kind of cool. Let's see, white. This Let's use this light yellow. I think that's pretty nice. And then let's make the look and feel match the website. So we're gonna put an H2 tag. And actually we're gonna use an H3 tag. All right, the reason I'm doing that is that I actually want this pop-up to be 50%. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna put an image. And on the right hand side we're going to make the action that happened so we're going to go ahead and add another column so you're going to right click on that add a new column and again if you're using flexbox you could just use flexbox for this um, as well so let's put the navigator on the right hand side and we're going to move our heading to the other column and then on the left hand side we're going to insert an image all right let's look at a library by clicking on the image and then we're gonna choose something square or tall. Let's choose that. That looks pretty good. It matches really well with what we're trying to do. And then we're gonna give users a discount by signing up for our mailing list. So we're going to 
create a call to action here. Let's see what they say. You're feeling peachy, snatch 10% off your order now. So we're going to say get a sweet discount because these are desserts. Uh, for now, we're going to leave a left align and we'll see what we do after the fact. I think this still should look, should have an H2. There's plenty of space here. And let's see what we how we feel once we get the X out of the way. Um, let's add some text as well. Get us, you know what? Um, let's see what they wrote here. Sign up below to receive your discount. And then we're going to make that light yellow as well. And we're going to add another heading of the actual discount. We're going to say 10%. Actually, we're going to do a 25% off per order. And let's go to style, typography. We're going to choose a smaller header. And we're going to make that secondary. Perfect. All right, we want this a little bit closer together, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. Sign up below to, to receive your discount. So now we're going to add a form to collect the person's information. So let's go into our widget selector and we're going to type in form. And we're going to choose the first one, the one that looks like this. This is the elementary form. And we're going to drop it in here. Now you'll notice right away, obviously, that this form is a little bit large. So we're going to remove the message because that's something we want. But we do want to keep the name and email because we want to make sure we we can personalize the emails. If you look here, the only you know, they're only asking for the email, but we're going to try to personalize this email as well. All right, perfect. So, let's just add a few things here to make this a little bit easier to digest. Um, we're going to move the text underneath and we're just going to use that as a disclaimer for now, and we're going to change the size to something smaller. So, we're going to choose 12 and we're going to change sign up by signing up. You agree to receive email marketing from us. Perfect. All right, it's looking good. It's looking really good. All right, now we're going to change the, the labels so they look a little bit better. Because right now they're a little bit hidden. Now you can always remove the label here from top, which we could if we wanted to make up some space, which I think in this case maybe will be a good idea. So let's do that. Let's hit update. And let's kind of see what our form looks like currently. When it's done updating, we're going to go into our home page. All right, let's pull it up and look at it. All right, this looks really good. I don't like where the X is currently, and it might be just because it's not enough space. So let's just fix a couple things here to make this a little bit better. Um, let's tighten up the spacing between this two. We're going to go to advance and we're going to use a negative margin of 20. That brings everything a lot closer together. And then we're going to choose the column where the text is and we're going to make sure that's in the middle. That's already looking better. The next thing we're going to want to do is go to settings, right? Because so you can see the X is a little bit close to the, to the text. Let's go to settings. And there's an option here. Let's see, where is it? On the close button that you can choose outside. Now, sometimes it doesn't move in the preview for some reason, but you just might need to use this. But as you can see, it's not going outside of the, of the pop-up. So I don't know if there's a bug or something. Let's click on update real quick and see where we are at this point if we pick outside. All right, it looks like it's outside somewhere. Ooh, what happened here? Let's refresh the page one more time. I mean, the X button doesn't seem to be in the inside, so that's a good sign. Uh, but let's just move it around and see where it is. Let's keep it zero, but let's just move it out 10%. We just want to see what's going on with that. All right, let's hit X. All right, so the button is all the way here on the outside of the page, which is fine. Um, 
we can use 45% vertical and 20%. Let's refresh this page and see where we are now. All right, so you can play around. Eventually, you can get it up here. Um, but instead of wasting time, let's just keep it inside. And let's move the position to pixels and pixels. And then we can just move it so it's near, but not near the corner, but not in the corner. So let's pick. Zero, or let's pick four, and let's pick four. All right, so let's hit save, and then now let's refresh the page, and this should look good. I think that looks pretty good, and we can move forward. So now let's let's make the magic happen. This is interesting that it does keeps doing that on the video. Okay, perfect. So now let's uh, go back to the Elementor pop up, and then we're gonna kind of make this whole process work. So we're gonna somebody's gonna fill in the name. You're going to put in the email. They're going to get an email with a coupon code. All right. So what action do we want people to take here? So we're going to go down to the actions after they submit. And we're going to collect the submissions because we want, we want to build a database of emails. And we're going to send them an email. Now, if you had something like MailChimp or MailerLite or ConvertKit or Active Campaign, you can always put that here and it will automatically add their email address into their your software and then you can use automation within that program in order to send out the email so that's another way that you can kind of do it but let's say you don't have a MailChimp account you want to keep things simple whatever um, we're going to show you how to do that you can also if you're using MailChimp still use this as a way to send out the first email address without having to use automation so we're going to click that off for now we are collecting submissions so we don't have to worry about that but we should name this form something so we should get it call it um, first order form uh, we're going to call it uh, first order discount form so we should call it something that we kind of can reference that easy all right so now we're going to go into the email section this is kind of where the where the magic happens so here we're going to first change the subject line. So this is the, remember, this is the, usually when you do a form in Elementor, you as the website admin get the email. But we're going to use something a little bit different. We want the person that filled out the form to get the email. So we're going to go in subject line. We're going to go, you are in. Here is your sweet discount. Use it before you lose it. All right. So typically, this will just include all the names, all the fields that are in the form. We don't want that because remember that you're sending them an email. And then we're going to use it before hi. And then we're going to put the person's name. Use it before you lose it. Code. Here is your code. And visit our site and we're gonna write the right the website and then we're gonna change some other settings here real quick we're gonna write the email address and the from name I think I'm happy with that now typically the emails also contain metadata you don't really need to include that because this again this email is gonna go to the user that filled it out so let's try to keep that as simple as possible all right <coughs> So Elementor doesn't do a great job of explaining. If you wanted to put the person's name here that filled out the, the form in here, I'm sorry, the email in here, it doesn't kind of tell you how to do that. It just tells you to put separate with commas. It also tells you that by default, all form fields are sent via all fields shortcode. To customize send fields, copy the shortcode that appears inside each field and paste it above. So what does that mean? It means that you can go into the form fields you can go into the actual field, you go into advanced, and then you use this short code in order to pre-fill that information. So we're gonna go copy that, go into the email again, and then we're gonna put the person's name here. Okay, so let's write a code here, first order, perfect. Okay, so so far so good. We have uh, the name, we have the link, 
we have the code. We're going to go back to the form field. We're going to select email, advance, copy the short code, and this is what we're going to put in the to field. All right, so we have everything ready to go. Now, just so you know, you could actually, in this area, do HTML. So we would, let's say we want to make this a little bit nicer. You would create this new paragraph here. This is space things out a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. And make the experience of the user a little bit better. Now you can actually type in here an image linking to your media library. You can do a lot of cool stuff in HTML, but I think people just want people just want their code. So let's just copy the link here. And then finally, let's just bring attention to where the code is by adding a strong tag in this area here. Okay, we're gonna hit update. Let's double check all our settings, make sure we're good, collect submissions, and you could also call this, give it a form ID, so we're gonna call it discount form pop-up. Okay, let's leave the form validation from default. And then if you wanted to have some custom messaging, you could when somebody submits the form. For now, we're gonna leave it the same but we do want to make sure that the style of the message is white. Let's make sure that people can actually see the message and then the error message, we're going to make it red. Perfect. We're going to hit update. And I think we're set. To, we're good to go here. Let's just take it for a spin. Okay. Let's just make sure it saves before we actually hit submit. So we're going to go to juicy bite We're going to refresh the page and now we'll see the pop-up. So I'm going to write my name, Hugo Mix, and then the email address. Hit send. Okay, your submission was successful. Again, you can always modify the message by going into content and then going into additional options. And then here it says your submission was successful. You can say, you can put in, you know, code was successfully sent, blah, blah, blah. So that's how you do it. All right. So I'm going to jump off and I'm going to open a new tab and pull up. And here's the email. I opened a new tab uh, using magic to show you kind of the email as it comes in. And as you can see, it works pretty well. You can click on this. Here's the bold link and here's your first order. Some email programs won't respect the, the paragraph tag. So what you can do is you go back here and you can try just using a, um, a BR instead of, a, of a, a paragraph tag. So you can go back into uh, email and you can change this to use BRs instead of paragraphs. And that's all it takes to really be able to create one of those form fields uh, that show up in a pop-up form that will send a user uh, the code via email. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below, and let me know, am I doing a good job? Thank you and see you soon.